Hello and welcome back to The Draw Pod. It's me, your host, Elise. In this episode, I'll be chatting while working on a painting over a inked drawing that I did with the Still Here, Still Life prompt. It's an Instagram account. I do these often. If you're new here, this is a visual podcast where I draw something or paint something and I chat with you as I go. You really don't have to watch the video to know what's going on, and if you prefer to listen to it on a podcast app, it's available everywhere. If you want to watch the YouTube video, though, check out my channel linked in the description of this podcast, and if you would like to see the final image, check out my art Instagram, which is at Elise underscore draws, and that is always linked in the description of the podcast. So in this episode, uh, as I mentioned, I will be working on this painting slash drawing for this week's Still Here, Still Life prompt. Um, I will also link that in the description of the podcast. It's a great art account that posts weekly prompts um, of still lives that are usually very fruity and fun and colorful. And it's a really fun community to do, like to to join in with. So I tend to do these a lot. They're awesome. Um, And then, but before we get into my usual art ramblings that I discuss on the podcast, I'm going to go through the weekly segments that I do, which are a life update, artist of the week, and a book update. So as for my life update, there was a snowstorm. Um, I guess, I I don't know if you could call it a snowstorm because that makes it sound like a blizzard, but there was a lot of snow in Austin. I think we at least got like seven inches and across Texas. It was just crazy. Um, So that took up my entire last week. That's kind of what happened last week. I'm recording this on Wednesday of the next week. Um, And now it's like 70 something degrees outside. It's ridiculous. I think it's getting up to 80 today. And we lost power for a little bit, but we definitely didn't have it as bad as like a ton of Texas. And then we also lost water for a few days. Uh, Yesterday, we just got off of the like boil water notice. So all that not super fun, but me and my family are safe. And so that is good. Um, yeah. Also one thing I wanted to mention is like the one week I didn't have a journal. I don't know if y'all totally know this. I'm a very avid journaler. I like to write my thoughts out, but I finished my journal that I started in September, um, on around Valentine's day. And then I, ordered a new one like two days before that. But of course, because of the storms, it was delayed. And so, um, basically during the most eventful week in Texas in like a long time for like the entire state, I did not have a way of writing things down. I mean, obviously I could have, you know, taken notes or something and then transferred it to a journal or just written out on a piece of paper and pasted it in. But I did not. Um, I kind of mentioned some things like on my Dailyo app, which is like a mood tracking app that I do. So I, I put some notes in there, but that was um, just kind of silly. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited to start writing again. Also, being inside for a week and then now having delicious 70 degree weather feels very nice and it makes you appreciate the outside. Um, so that it's been nice to go back on walks and it's really, uh, reinvigorated me to sort of get stuff done because I like, I don't know, I I've been, you know, in a little bit of a slump here and there. It happens from time to time, but, um, kind of this change of pace, change in weather has been really nice. Um, so that's good. And I really enjoyed making YouTube videos this week, which is a little different because like I said, I've kind of been feeling down about it. I don't know. Um, and I'm finally like a little bit ahead of schedule. So, uh, this week we'll be having a studio vlog. And then the next is my birthday drawing video. I made like, I did a self portrait of myself for my birthday. I haven't edited that one yet, but I'm very excited to see how it turns out. I think it was a fun idea. It was fun to spend one of those snow days just focusing on doing a drawing of myself. So, um, yes. And the last thing I put on here to like update you on my life is I spent way too long or I I stayed up too late playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, the version for the Switch, that remake. Um, And it kept me up like very late. And I also like when I turned it off, I was like thinking about it in my mind, like playing the game, the mystery dungeon game. If you've ever played it, you would understand. Anyway, so that was interesting, but I've just, yeah, I've been craving playing more Pokemon games again. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but maybe also it's the fact that Pokemon is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And I'm uh, sorry for this quick tangent about Pokemon. I am very stressed. By the time you're hearing this podcast, I think we will know, or at least the day I think it'll be announced, 
um, is when this podcast goes up. But we need to know if we're going to be getting po- Sinnoh region Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. I need them, and I need them to not be in the Let's Go format. Th- these are my thoughts. Anyway, that's enough Pokemon stuff. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. <laughs> um, but now for the artist of the week, um, it is Sari Not Sorry Art, um, and I will link all of her information in the description of the podcast, of course. Um, the Instagram tag or that she or her account name is not underscore sorry underscore art. And oh my gosh, you've probably seen her before. I feel like she's pretty big on Instagram, but also I'm like, I see her all the time on my Instagram, but that's probably just my own individual feed. But I love all of the stuff she paints. Emphasis on stuff. The way she renders objects is so nice. I believe she paints with oil paint and she just cranks out her work like I love the the fact that she's very much like a quantity focused artist like she just puts a ton of work out and it's all good quality but they're definitely also pretty quick paintings and I like seeing the effect of that and I feel like in some of my art that I have done in the past especially when I was doing more painting I have very little patience and sometimes that can be a good thing and with painting it can give you kind of a unique result so um I also really love another part about her art that is that um, she kind of lets her underpaintings peek through. And so a lot of the time she'll just do a normal kind of orangey, I forget, is it burnt sienna um, underpainting? And then she will, but sometimes she'll also do like pink underpaintings and just kind of fun colors. And then she lets that peek through so you can kind of see some of that. I just love that kind of style. It's becoming, it's becoming a little more trendy now. But anyway, she's also an Austin artist, which is very cool. So Go check out Siri's work. I will link everything in the description and follow her on Instagram. So she's great. Now for a book update. I am still working through the autobiography of Malcolm X, but it's such a good book. Boy, wonderful book. Um, It is quite long. It's like 500 or so pages, um, but I definitely recommend checking it out if you're looking for a great autobiography. Again, I'm still only like halfway through, but I am reading it a lot. Um, I just really like have like so far like learning about him and learning that there were so many very distinct stages of his life that all involved so much change in himself and his world like surrounding him. So um, it's one of the first autobiographies that I've read. Honestly, I, I can't think of the last one that I read before this. I know I've read one or two, but this is a great one. And it is linked in the description of the podcast. I feel like I say this every five seconds, but head there to check it out. Um, I'm not sure what I want to read next, um, and I'm not really interested in multitasking and like reading another book at the same time, because I want to give this my full attention. And you know, I like to read two books at once whenever it's like a nonfiction kind of self-helpy type book, um, like Range. And then I also that that I read a while back that I didn't actually like that book too much. And then at the same time, I like to read just like a fiction book, and I can get through books pretty quickly that way. But with an autobiography, I feel like it's somewhat in between the two of them and requires a lot more focus and dedication to it. So I'm just going to finish this book. Uh, Am I two books behind on schedule on Goodreads? Yes, but that is okay. So um, that is my book update. Very fun. And now art ramblings. So um, I guess, yeah, it's funny. I mentioned that uh, Sari Not Sari's whole art thing is that she spends or I mean, I'm pretty sure just kind of from the quality of her work. And I mean, just not like the quality, but like the way it looks. (laughs) Um, It seems that she doesn't spend a ton of time on each piece and she can crank out a lot of them. And um, I really enjoyed slowing down and spending a lot of time on one piece the other day. And that was doing the self-portrait for my birthday. Um, You'll see it whenever it comes out. It should be posted in the next few days, but it's me with an alligator, like a baby alligator on my shoulder, and I'm holding my child, this armadillo, in my arms, and there's like a background. It was a very fun piece to ink. I would say it took me about three or four hours to like get it all sketched out, put together, inked, and I was like surprisingly very satisfied with it. I was very confident in my work and that was so exciting. And um, then I was of course anxious about getting to the watercolor portion of it because watercolor stresses me out. Um, Well, not really watercolor itself. I mean, sometimes it does, but it's like a loving stress out. 
but it's more, I was worried about the color scheme because as you know, if you're a, a frequent listener of the draw pod, I am very anxious about it and, and kind of insecure and not confident in my skills to kind of pick out a color scheme and put it together like a complex color scheme. Um, I can do like just monochromatic work or just like within like blues, pinks, and purples. I'm pretty strong there, like a limited palette. But this um, was pretty complex and I feel like I did a good job with it. I struggled with it. It took me a day or two to kind of take time to step back and look at my work and judge kind of what I I thought about it and just got, getting adjusted to the colors because that's just something I found is really important to me is to actually like step back and look at it like someone else is looking at it, you know, someone with fresh eyes. So that was really fun. It was really fun to overcome my color fears, but also, oh my gosh, whenever I was just doing the inking process of it, it was so much fun. I love inking so much. It's just a good way for me to relax and like turn my brain off. It's really so fun. And for this piece that I'm working on right now, I wanted to do more line work, more inking, but um, I guess the painting or drawing or whatever didn't really lend itself to that. So I didn't really do much of that. I mean, this final piece turned out really great. This was a very fun and interesting color scheme itself um, with greens and oranges and blues, and which you'll see kind of later if you're watching along. Um, but yeah, greens, oranges, and blues, and like kind of red oranges as well. And yeah, I'm going to have to like save this and take a mental note to use this color scheme in the future because it was just really fun to do. Hmm. Let's see. What else? What other art art things do I have on my mind? Um, I pulled out my cute pink camera that I have. I have like a Nikon Coolpix camera that I got several years ago. Um, and I guess it shoots okay video. I think the audio is not very good, but I'm thinking this could be good for my draw pods and stuff since I'm not recording audio along with the draw pod. I'm just doing the video and it shoots in 1080p and I used it to record footage for my birthday self-portrait thing and I'm pretty sure that that's going to turn out well. Again, I haven't looked at the footage yet, but I think that's pretty fun. It's it's cute. It's tiny. It's like a vlogging camera. It's, it's very good. You can like flip the screen and everything. Um, I think I got it as a Christmas gift a few years ago and when I was also trying to make a start at starting my YouTube channel up again when that didn't really happen. But I did make um, my sororities, um, what is it? It's like our second round recruitment event. I made a video for that uh, like two or three years ago and that turned out really great. So hopefully it works. Hopefully it turns out okay because I'm really relying on that footage for my YouTube video. Some other art things. I just interviewed today with my one of my friends from school. She's doing a article on me, I believe, with my the place that I used to intern at, which she's currently interning at at TU Press, and that was really fun to do. Kind of fun to sit down and talk about my art and be interviewed about it. Um, it's interesting. I've gotten a few requests on in my email, which I'm sorry, I'm terrible at responding to that kind of stuff because I don't have my email logged in in all the places. It's it's confusing. But I did get a few email requests here and there, which were kind of cool to like have to to have me talk about Redbubble stuff on my on like their channel or do a collab or something like that, which is, which was cool. And I, I should have responded, but I think it's a little too late now, whenever I like actually discovered it. Um, and I just kind of didn't end up doing it one because I looked at it too late, but also cause like, you know, I do these other art things. I do like Redbubble and I'm still uploading stuff. I also just uploaded new stuff to Redbubble. Um, this orange rose design that I painted the other day. I've really been enjoying kind of turning the art that I'm making into red bubble designs. I think that could be a cool place to take my shop. But yeah, it's kind of just something happening a little bit more in the background for me right now. You know, I, I think it would be fun to have a red bubble YouTube channel and have that be what I dedicate all my time to. But I feel like, you know, making videos just about art like this is just 
a little bit more sustainable for me personally, but that was really cool that I got that interview request. But anyway, today it was fun to just kind of talk about all the work I've done, talk about my Instagram account, like why I did this, which was, you know, it's just because I got an art degree and I was like, okay, I want to use this after graduating, but I don't really know exactly how I want to do it. And you know, this podcast was a great way for me to figure that out and just start making work. So anyway, what other art things are going on in my mind right now? I haven't really, I mean, it's been probably over a year now since I've gone to see a show, obviously because of the pandemic that is happening. Um, but I would like to maybe see something. I know a show opened up at like the Blanton Museum in Austin a little bit ago, because I know they were closed for a lot of the end of 2020. Um, So I might try to see what they've got going on over there. Um, I still need to make a visit to like Umlauf and what's the other one? Umlauf is a sculpture garden. And then there's another sculpture garden called Laguna Gloria in North Austin. And those would be cool to go to. I don't spend a lot of time looking at sculpture considering that me and three, me and 3D, um, have historically not worked together very well. But, you know, I'm kind of trying to adopt the mindset, of course, of like never say never um, with like exploring art mediums. But yeah, I'm just not personally (laughs) interested in doing a sculpture, but I think it's interesting. And that could be a cool kind of um, exploration into art history to just kind of learn more about that since it's something that I barely learned about whenever I was in school with art history. So We'll see if I do that. Um, any other interesting art things lately? I'm so, I I I really kind of went fast this episode, so I'm sort of running out of my things to say. I did have an interview for a job this week that went really well, I would say, and so I am waiting to hear back on that soon. But that's a pretty exciting prospect we've got happening soon. Hopefully, who knows? Um, Yeah, it's been, I've been, if you you have been wondering about my job stuff, I have been having a better experience applying to jobs this year. Um, It was a very challenging part of my 2020 was just kind of realizing that I like graphic design um, and it's a good skill to have, but it's not actually necessarily what I can see myself doing fully. I mean, also if, you know, this, I hope this doesn't bite me in the butt in a few years if I'm like, I mean, people change. Currently right now, I just want more like communications type jobs and be able to do art like this and make YouTube videos like this um, of just like painting and making work on the side Um, or just have that be like what I do outside of it. And I have found a significant increase in like success and interviewing with jobs now that I've reprioritized and really sat and thought about what I want out of a career. And I, I really think that, um, I'm more inclined to more of a communications type position, um, or like working in an agency or something of the sort. So, um, yes, that is the update on my job stuff at the end of this episode when I am supposed to be rambling about art. I haven't been sketching as much as I wanted to this week. It's just something that I don't know. It's like with, I guess it's like with playing my Switch, sketching, and eating apples. I always wish I did more of that. Like, I wish I ate more apples. Every time I eat an apple, I'm like, dang, I wish I always ate more apples. And same with sketching. And I just feel so good after it. And I need to remember that I feel good after eating apples, playing video games, (laughs) and sketching. So, um, I need to kind of find some new things to sketch. I haven't really figured out um, some things. I don't know. Now that I'm actually able to go outside, maybe I will be able to do another art field trip, like my little outdoor studio trips that I made that one video about. I think that'll be fun. And now that I have another camera that I'm using, it would be cool to kind of get different angles. Um, So I know that there's a YouTuber. I think it's Anya. It's like A-N-J-A. And I love her channel. She has kind of an art channel, more creative, but also travel. And it's just kind of her own space to me. Like her her channel is just kind of her own thing. And it's her personality as well. And I really like it. But um, I'll try to link it in the description as well. But she, um, 
she did a cool video with like different angles when she was just like sketching outside and I think that would be really fun to do as well. So maybe I'll have to plan something, go to one of the botanical gardens or whatever that we have in the city um, or maybe travel somewhere else. Maybe I'll head to San Antonio and go to their botanical garden and just have a day trip with myself to um, just to make art and do it on my own time because I think I've mentioned this before but I really I get stressed when I bring friends to like botanical gardens and like visit places with them because I want to sit down and do nothing or like draw for like I could do that for like eight hours in a day I could take a long trip and just get all my drawing out because I want to draw everything um but I don't want people to be bored so anyway um I am going to go eat lunch now which I'm very excited about so I will talk to you guys and next week's episode of the draw pod it comes out every Saturday or I'll also see you on Tuesday for the next video on my channel again it'll be a studio vlog and I've got some good content coming up soon so yeah um, I hope everyone is doing well uh, thank you for you and your ears I appreciate them and I will talk to you next time goodbye <music>